Consider this exercise. The temperature in degrees Celsius of a greenhouse is taken every hour. Draw a graph for a 24-hour period. Implement a solution using the Python programming language. I'm going to get chat GPT to write this for me. So let's consider what I need to do. I need to devise a suitable prompt. And my first attempt is shown here. I'm going to ask ChatGPT to write a Python program to draw a graph of temperature against time. The unit of time is from 0 to 23 in one hour slots. And the temperatures are as follows. To speed up the process, I'm actually now going to ask ChatGPT to generate me the 24 temperatures. I now need to consider a suitable prompt for ChatGPT to give me the 24 temperatures. And you can see that is here. Generate 24 random numbers between 17 and 23. I've just chose 17 and 23 because they would be typical temperatures of a greenhouse. It's up to you to choose whatever you like for this when you have a go at doing this. You can see I've entered the prompt here. It says generate 24 random numbers between 17 and 23. I'll now click on here and let's see what it does. Now I will actually copy these and I will put those as part of my prompt. So I'll highlight them, right click, click on to copy and then I'll add this to the prompt that I'm going to use. So I will now revisit the prompt as you can see here and you will note that I've added the list of 24 random numbers at the end. So I'm now going to use this to ask ChatGPT to draw me a graph using Python. So you can see I've placed the prompt here and now I'm going to click onto this and here you can see it is producing an appropriate Python program and it's a question now of waiting for it to finish. It's finished and it's now telling me about the program and describing how it actually works, which I didn't ask for but it's telling me anyhow. The thing to do is to now to come up here to scroll up and then click on this where it says copy code. I can now paste this into a Python editor and see when I run it whether it works. You can see I've pasted the program into an appropriate editor and now I'm going to run the program by coming here clicking onto that. It's telling me it must be saved so I'll say OK and let's see what it gives me. There we are. Let's move it over here and you can see it's given me temperature versus time and it is indeed giving me a graph and all I had to do was think of the appropriate prompts. In fact I ended up giving it two prompts when in fact the exercise I want to leave you with is see if you can get it to do this with just one prompt. In other words don't find the random numbers separately to begin with. See if you can combine the both prompts I give to get it to draw an appropriate graph. Now the question is what does the computer program actually do? Well I'm just going to shut this down and this and the program is behind and you will note that it gives you some comments here that you can refer to and what you now need to do is to get into a mindset of well I've got chat GPT to produce the program for me but am I sure I know how it works and if you're not it's now a question of looking at each line of code to see if you understand what actually happens if you get stuck in anything you can ask chat gpt again but here this is created a list of temperatures and that's the random list i gave it and here it's giving me a times that's the number of times in the range from 0 to 24 so that goes from 0 to 23 because it doesn't go as far as 24 and this this is using the plot that is part of matplotlib which was imported on this line and looking further down it is telling you to give the plot a title it's telling you how to label the x-axis it's telling you how to label the y-axis and then it is actually showing the plot now of course you can go about this get it to give you the program and not understand one line of the code now that's not the purpose of getting chat GPT to help you 
it produces you a program, make sure you understand it. And it's very tempting if you're given homework, for example, to say, well, I'll just get chat GPT to do it for me. Well, by all means do that. But of course, you won't learn anything. But don't think chat GPT is something that you shouldn't consider. It most certainly is. The speed with which it produced this program for me, well, it's faster than, frankly, I can do. And I've been programming for decades. All I needed to do was to think of a prompt and it produced produces this lot. Now this is a relatively straightforward program. There's nothing here that I couldn't have done from the off. But you can see the power of using chat GPT when you're writing Python programs. My question is why would you not use it? Now if you're a school teacher thinking, well, they're just all going to cheat. Every time I give them an exercise, they're going to use chat GPT. Well, you've got to encourage them not to cheat if that's your definition of what's going on here and you need to reflect on your assessment processes i certainly would never any longer give an assessment for homework that's going to count towards their final award i would do a class assessment where frankly they were not allowed access to chat gpt but it is a very useful tool in order to help learn to code and I would ask you to use it. I would encourage any teacher out there to use ChatGPT because it is extremely powerful. Bear in mind, sometimes it doesn't get it right. But that in itself is a learning process. If you have a go at this yourself, it might turn round to you, for instance, and say, what is matplotlib? In other words, here you can see I've asked it to import matplotlib plot lib and the pi plot aspect of that as plt but if you haven't got this module on your computer you then have to pip install it now that's for another video and if you want to you can look on this youtube channel and you'll see i've done a video on how to pip install matplotlib so you do need a degree of understanding of what's going on to really effectively use chat GPT. You really must use it with your pupils and your students. That's my opinion. You may disagree. Please consider subscribing to the channel and click the bell to ensure you get an update every time I upload a video. Maybe you would like to consider supporting the development of these free videos via Patreon. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter and also check out the supporting website.